Robert Mugabe grew up in what was then the British colony of southern Rhodesia. He was a teacher when he went into politics to free the black majority from white rule. The Europeans in the country must regard themselves as citizens of the country. And they count only for one. Each of them counts for one. Race riots broke out. Mugabe became more radical. Prime Minister Ian Smith locked him up for 10 years. But he continued to back armed struggle against the white regime in Salisbury. When independence came in 1980, Robert Mugabe was hailed as the liberator. Liberation turned to civil war in Matabele land between the former guerrilla allies. Ethnic massacres for which Mugabe and his military commanders never accepted responsibility. Over the course of 20 years, the economy collapsed. Economically, I guess most people would say he's an illiterate. To stay in power, Mugabe played the populist card in 2000. He nationalized land and expropriated white farmers. And the more he was isolated by the international community, the more he blamed the former colonial masters. The British cannot teach us democracy because we taught them democracy here in Zimbabwe through the barrel of the gun. Mugabe was declared winner of the violent 2002 elections. The next polls in 2008 were held in a dramatic period of hyperinflation. Former United Nations head Kofi Annan urged him to leave office. Mugabe refused before reluctantly agreeing to share power with Morgan Changarai in 2009. Mugabe is now not only a president of the country, he is the institution that has run our country for the last 30 years. Changarai was never really free to govern. And in 2013, Mugabe was re-elected for five more years. Then in November of 2017, he made the choice that would seal his downfall, sacking his vice president Emerson Menengagwa, his party's favorite to succeed him. The army forced Mugabe into house arrest. After a week of pressure and a final televised address in which he refused to step down, Mugabe finally submitted his letter of resignation. Emerson Menengagwa became the next president, bringing Mugabe's 37 years of uninterrupted power to an end. Over a year later, after a deadly post-election crackdown and with an economy that continues to struggle, many say Zimbabwe has seen little change in the post-Mugabe era.